Hey everybody, welcome back to CISO Life. I'm Brian Hoagley, brought to you by Side Channel. You can follow me anywhere around social media using hashtag CISO Life. Follow me down on Twitter. Shortcut, brianhoagley.com brings you right to LinkedIn. Follow me over there. Hope everybody's doing well. Back in the studio again, coming into the near end of summer. And one of the areas that keeps popping up, access controls, authentication, entitlements, dare I say zero trust. Ah. Anyway, uh, who doesn't love a good buzzword bingo? Shout out to everybody going to summer camp in a little we uh, couple weeks out there in the Las Vegas desert. Have some fun, stay safe, be good kids. Um, so let's talk about access control. Let's talk about some of these concepts on zero trust. This isn't all of them, but I think one of the areas that becomes very interesting is when, you know, this is an example I give, you know, to clients and others. You know, why does HR have access to finances? Why does the finance group have access to, um, you know, security? Why, you know, why are any of groups able to access each other? And in a, in a network that we see today, kind of flat networks, even segmented networks with VLANs, um, if you're implementing some type of a, you know, a, some type of segmentation, you know, capability inside of just your networking. The goal is obviously to, you know, here are your people, right? Here are your users. This is your user base, right? They probably have access to each other, right? And through their systems. And separately, right, you have, you know, your systems. Okay. So you've got, you know, one system, the database, and maybe that's HR. Maybe you got the finance file server, right? And that's got its device, its you know, its data. And a lot of VLANs and a lot of access controls are primarily focused right here, right? Where it's like, look, we want to make sure that this access is is best managed. It's constricted, right? And ideally, only these people are granted access based on a user account. Well, I think there's some shortcomings that. Uh, show up when you start and continue to just use that type of functionality, right, inside of your, it also becomes kind of costly, right? It's uh, untenable, but not cheap, it's not easy to continue to manage based on user accounts. So looking at zero trust capabilities and kind of like the direction that zero trust wants to go is how do we create not just this access, HR to access HR system, finance to access finance, business lines to access whatever you want. Other people can go ahead and just, you know, everyone can access the internet as they need, okay? How do we start segmenting and thinking about, I want to make sure that HR systems people only have access to HR systems and then the internet. What if we could create environments like this? Okay. Now we start really reducing one. Well, there's a couple of things I think we're, what we're doing here. One, implementing capabilities such as this, it reduces the cost, right? Reduces the cost of management, right? Specifically around management of these types of capabilities, right? It reduces the licensing, it reduces the hardware costs. Okay, this is huge. Okay, and and moving to a direction like this is is pretty big. It also significantly reduces lateral movement. Why is that important? Because lateral movement is Bob. I'm going to pick on Bob, right? Bob in the business line gets fished. Bad Bob. Hacker now gets to access Bob's system and now try to move laterally throughout the environment. And because user networks are traditionally pretty open, Bob's able to go, or Bob's uh, account that just got taken over is able to do that. Maybe the attacker now pivots to a uh, to some type of a you know AD or kind of system, right? And from there, now has access to everything. 
if we move to be able to segment the systems themselves within the environment, okay, let's just start with something simple. Let's start segmenting HR. HR systems should only be able to talk to each other. And then from there, okay, now let's blow that out. Now, got HR. Oh, he's like on HR first. They're good sports. Now within HR, right, you got individuals. And now there's no way to access anything else except for your own system. So this type of movement, this this type of activity, this is a direction to go with access. There's some solutions out there, but again, there's massive management costs that you need to be able to do. There's licensing costs. There's usually hardware, right? And that hardware requires upgrades. So looking for a software-defined network capabilities, right, to be able to make this happen, that is the future, I believe, of being able to address this risk. Reduce costs, keep access and systems in place the way that we want, that we expect, right? That's what we're trying to do here. This type of implementation obviously doesn't detract from HR or finance from doing their jobs and access, access to what they want. So you need a capability that is going to be able to manage or allow for the management of, okay, HR can always access the HR system. HR systems shouldn't be able to access each other. Finance shouldn't be able to access uh, HR user accounts and endpoint devices. Finance shouldn't be able to access HR systems. They have no reason to be on there. This, you blow this out to when you look at development, right? And uh, development servers and systems. It's it, The scenario plays out everywhere. This type of micro-segmentation, okay? And that's what we're doing here. We're trying to look at micro-segmenting these environments and the accesses. That is one of the first steps to zero trust after a policy is implemented, right? So the first step, ideally, right? Write a policy, then build the tech, you implement it for the people. Policy, technology to enable the policy, help the people, and it's not rocket science. Talking about the safe structure for a long time. But it's important to start thinking about how do you start implementing? What are the technologies that you can start doing? What are the policy that you need to first put in place? Policies, I don't, I don't say it's, it's actually quite straightforward. And easy. It just requires top-down leadership, right? You need CEO, the CFO on top to fully embrace this first. Say, yep, this is how we want to do it. You need the CIO, the CTO. To implement the technology, you need HR to be behind people that you're going to implement this on. Make sure that they're rallying behind the cause, if you will. Okay? So, again, the technology is a piece. This has been, I think, lacking in our... But there's obviously a disregard for implementing the policy first and then taking care of the... Again, just some thoughts. Anyway. I'm Brian Hoagley, CISO Life. Again, follow us around, hashtag CISO Life. Check us out on Side Channel. Check me out on LinkedIn. Follow any other con um, content we're putting out. Again, just crossed 13,000 on LinkedIn. Thank you so much. This has really been great. Um, I enjoy doing this, and I'm going to keep doing this as long as people keep following. Um, heck, when I started this, I was doing it, not thinking anybody would. But, uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun. Hope everybody's good. Stay safe. Brian Hoagley, catch you next time.